Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video today, we're gonna be addressing the most popular video on my channel by far. And I'm gonna write all my wrongs and address everything that's wrong with the worst lines of code video that I uploaded back in July of 2019. To this day, I still get a bunch of comments of people criticizing the way I made the video, all the mistakes I made, even though it was a year ago and I did it for fun and I didn't think it was gonna get more than 100 views on it. But you see, times are different now. It's gotten a lot more attention and this video has been a long time coming. So in this video right here, we're gonna react to it. I got my computer right here. We're gonna react to the video. I'm gonna address all the different kinds of points that I made that were wrong at the time and better code examples that I could have used to convey the message I was trying to send. So to give more context into this video, about a year ago when I was still trying to figure out what kind of channel I was gonna have, I thought that making videos talking about real life code would be a cool thing. And I made a video just like that a few weeks ago before that video. And around this time, I just wanted to find creative ways to tell the world about software engineering and about coding in general. And I thought making a funny video about bad examples of coding and different kinds of things that you should avoid would be a great idea. And I guess it was because it's by far the most successful video on my channel, but it does have a few issues with it and I'm gonna address it in this video. Hopefully, let me know in the comments if there's still something that I'm missing or whatever, but let's get right to it. We're gonna react to it. And also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like this type of content. The thing is, you know, I'm not even gonna explain myself. Let's just go right into the video, and as the examples and everything goes, I'm gonna let y'all know what's going on here. Messages that forge brighter connections. 100, 130,000 views. I didn't want it to be, if if you had told me a year ago that this, I would have a video reach 100,000 views, I didn't think it'd be this one, honestly, but it is what it is and I'm happy that it happened in general. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And in this one, we're gonna be talking about some of the worst lines of code that you could ever write in the real world. I still like making basketball related content on this channel, but I and I still do if there's a time for it to come back I would love to keep making basketball content, but I'm just focused on one subject for now I mainly get clips from my ps4 which as you can see isn't exactly functioning right now work So until then I'm gonna be banging out these tech and coding videos, which I love you see There's a lot of I put some little jokes and little comedy bits in there just to show you this was not meant to be taken seriously. Didn't know it would blow up to be like this. Of course, I'm happy of it all, but just to let you know, I was just putting in jokes because it was a comedic kind of video. I love doing anyway, so it's not really that much of a burden or a hassle. As I said before, in this video, we're gonna go over a few examples of code that you could write in the workplace that could be potentially damaging for any number of reasons. And to see them all, make sure you watch to the end of this video. Oh yeah, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more cool content. Thanks. Did you like and subscribe already? I'm waiting. So in this first example we have here, we have these two variables, or better yet, constants. That's the const keyword in JavaScript. And they both represent date objects, which as you can see here. Okay, so something does stick out to me here. And a few people have pointed this out in comments over the last few months. If you see this um, if condition, if today reads it like a Boolean, but because this value is not null, it's always gonna evaluate as true. The example that I was trying to convey here is if you have a variable that's called today and it's set to one day in time, today is gonna be a different day the next day. And that's what I was trying to get across, but this was a wrong example. Since today is not a null value, this will always evaluate to true. So this was just a false uh, example that I set up. All right, you got me. That's one. We got one right here. So instead of hard coding this value, July 14th, 2019, better yet to use a built-in function of the date class, like today, because today won't always be that day. And for tomorrow, I guess you do today plus 24 hours or whatever suits your time needs. All right, that was an easy example. So let's move on to something a little more difficult. So I have these five variables here, A, B, C, D. I'm gonna add some more. 
These are all variables used for a specific program. See if you can spot the issue with how I'm declaring these variables as I'm creating them. And no, there's nothing wrong with me declaring all these variables on one line, even if it is a little messy. This is perfectly legal coding and should work in most languages. So the problem here, I actually don't know what the problem here. I forgot this example, but salute to everybody that watched most of the video or at least got to the end because it's just weird watching my videos back like this. <laughs> here is the variable naming. If I want to create a program using these variables, I'm going to very quickly forget what value A is or what value Q is. And the same goes, if not more, for any other person that wants to look at the code that I've written. Bad variable naming can take many forms, such as calling something, be careful with this. Yeah, I know that that variable is important, but why should I be careful with this? And calling something secret value is a little better, but still, it doesn't exactly say what kind of secret value it is. You know, in defense of myself, because I do understand that I made a lot of bad points in this video and I had a lot of incorrect and misguided examples. I had some good points in this. Even in my full-time career and in all of my internships, like variable naming is so vital for people to understand what you're talking about or how you're using information. I think this was a really cool example that not a lot of people talk about in the comments that I've seen. I just wanna say, like, I, I have to give myself credit somewhere. Some of the points I made are were, in, were valuable and weren't at all flawed. And I think this was one of them. I'm gonna give this to myself. This was definitely not a bad one. First two examples are pretty harmless, but now we're, we might just start ramping it up here. In this example, it's a simple for loop that runs 10 times. And during each execution of the loop, this sleep function is called. So if we're calling sleep 10 times in a for loop. Okay, I have seen a comment about this before, um, asking why would you have sleep in a program ever? And I wanna let you know, it's, it's more common than you think. I wasn't thinking about it at the time for when I made this video, but a lot of times when you have like web scrapers, like Selenium, any kind of program that like crawls pages and gathers information, a lot of times you'll see sleep because if you're waiting for the page to load before you want to grab a certain element, a lot of times you need to have some kind of arbitrary amount of time that the program rests. So sleep is pretty common, at least in terms of web scraping kind of technologies. There's no direct way to relieve the situation, but it starts with better code design. So we've got two more examples left, and this one involves a bit of... Okay, this one here is the number one point that people keep bringing up all in the comments. Even two days ago, I got this comment saying, and I appreciate it. I will never ever not appreciate people commenting and people sharing their thoughts about videos that I make because that is the best thing. As a creator on the internet, that's the most I can hope for, that people just interact with my content. It makes them feel a certain way even if they feel negatively or positively, like it's dope. I just keep getting comments about this one example. We're gonna see exactly why. Of mental work. These two statements are both using logical operators to compute some value. However, there's an issue with both of them, a big one. See if you can spot it. Okay. Can you spot it? I'm about to see it. Okay, so if we look at the first statement, let's try to break down what's going on here. This is saying if X or X and Y then return some value, but something's redundant here and it's the presence of X. If you're looking for X in both cases, then there's no need for the first statement because the second statement, if true, guarantees that X is present. So we can just break this down and just remove the first case and call it if X and Y. Now this. <laughs> These two statements, the one that I just made here, they're not equivalent. Yes, they are not logically equivalent. I'm going to tell you why you're seeing if X and Y here. I was writing this code, these code examples, under the assumption that a developer was just trying to write some code that accomplished some task and they needed the values X and Y to do it. Hopefully I can explain this correctly. So if I'm trying to 
rescue this code, if I'm trying to fix this code, I had this assumption or I put myself in the role of someone that's trying to preserve the code as it was before in terms of the logic, but just make it cleaner. I'm not just thinking logically equivalent. I'm also thinking like, okay, functionally, is this still the same thing? Do I still care about the value of Y? So I'm gonna put Y in the solution. I'm just gonna make it a bit cleaner. I understand though, that doesn't excuse it. It's still logically not equivalent. I'm just saying. I thought Y, from the perspective of the second person, the person that's cleaning up this mess, I just thought Y was still important. So I was just gonna bring it over. You can debate with me. You can argue whether or not it doesn't matter because it's not logically equivalent. I still hold true to that. In general, if you're gonna change code to make it more efficient, you should also consider the business logic and the actual impact of the code that you're changing. Because now, the correct solution that would be logically equivalent to this would just be if X. So let's continue. Statement, even though it's a bit longer, it's not that much more difficult. Here we're checking if A and B, or if not A and B, or if a and not b then return some value it seems the author of this code is pretty much intending to write if a or b is present and okay notice my language there it seems the author of this code yeah it seems a little extra that i'm pretending to play different roles even though i'm the same person that wrote these examples in the real world we are reviewing other people's code and a lot of times we're looking over code or making changes to code that we didn't originally write ourselves. So a lot of these assumptions and investigation skills that you have to acquire, you have to learn it. And you learn it with examples like this. So, yeah. And that's a whole lot more simpler than all those statements above. If you've watched up to this point in the video, thanks for sticking around for the final example. Don't forget to like the video if you haven't, and in the comments, let me know some of the worst code that you've ever seen, even if you've written it yourself. Example of most likely some of the most dangerous code you could ever write. Here, we're looking at a function that's serving as a password encryptor. Since the main objective of encryption is to protect your password, can you spot the very obvious problem that's present in this code? This shouldn't even take long. The fact that in this function, all that's happening to the password is it's being reversed is so irresponsible and dangerous that it's not even worth a full explanation. Okay, I might've exaggerated a bit with this. Nope, I don't know of any kind of company or business that just has reversing their passwords as encryption. That, that doesn't happen. Encryption is also a much more in-depth process than what I'm explaining here. I'll, gi I'll, give you, I'll give you that one. I'll give you, I'll give you all that one. There's code like this in the real world that take your password that you save to an account on a website and just store it on a server in plain text and in plain view for any hacker that wants to just take over that database and just take over your account. This happens very often. Reversing a password isn't enough to secure a password at least make it a little more difficult for a hacker to break in. So there you have it. These are some of the examples of the worst lines of code that you could write. And of course, worse is subjective. Maybe you thought most of these were pretty harmless. But anyway, if you watch to the end of this video, thank you so much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more cool content and get ready for the next video because it's going to be a good one. Thanks for watching. Yeah, so quick note about my PS4. I ended up having to get it replaced. I, I failed trying to fix it. So that was basically the video that I created in July of 2019, not thinking that even 100 people would get to see it. And more than 100 did. I've definitely grown a lot as a software engineer and definitely as a creator of making YouTube videos. And I understand a lot more about the responsibility I have to make sure that the information I give to my subscribers who I care about so much, I always wanna make sure I'm giving you guys great content and I'm getting better at making different types of content that you guys can enjoy. 
So this was fun reacting. If you all want to see me react to other types of videos, even if they're not my own, I'm happy to think about it. I just don't want to get, you know, copyright striked or anything if I'm reacting to other people's videos. But this is kind of fun. Hopefully when I edit everything, it turns out all right. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more cool content. Thanks everyone. Peace.